Gold is a real commodity. Gold is used in all sorts of things. You can't make Bitcoin without gold. The Bitcoin miners use gold to create Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't have any actual value. The stock market is going to collapse unless the Fed just lets the inflation run, which is what I think is going to happen. And maybe the stock market doesn't crash in dollars, but it crashes in terms of gold. The stock market goes down. So is everybody's wages. Uh, because the price of everything is going to keep going up and the bottom is going to drop out of the dollar because our global creditors are going to realize that we can never pay the debt and inflation is never going to stop. The central banks that are moving into gold now, they're going to accelerate their buying and then the price of gold will move up even faster and bonds will co collapse. Gold prices are at all time highs and are now beating the U.S. stock market. Futures of the glittering metal are up about 11% year-to-date after a superb rally in March. On March 11th, gold hit a record high of $2,182 per ounce and kept rising. Today, it trades for around $2,300. By comparison, the S&P 500 is up about 10% and the Nasdaq is up 9.7%. President of Euro-Pacific Capital Peter Schiff warns that if reality hits, the stock market may collapse unless the Fed allows unchecked inflation. In his foresight, Schiff envisions a potential crash relative to gold, impacting global confidence in U.S. debt repayment, leading to a surge in gold prices and a bond market collapse. Bitcoin and gold are moving in tandem right now, and both the digital currency and the precious metal hit new record highs last week. Those gains have come during a relatively muted period for stocks with the benchmark S&P 500 index up just 3% over the past month, as investors try to figure out the Federal Reserve's next move on interest rates. Schiff's assessment doubts Bitcoin's superiority over gold, highlighting its current outperformance against traditional assets. Meanwhile, he underscores gold's longevity as a commodity, citing its enduring demand in jewelry and other sectors. Despite record high prices, the global jewelry market proved to be remarkably resilient as demand inched up by three tons year on year, said the World Gold Council. Now we present the clips of Peter Schiff's insights from his recent interview with Schwab Network. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. The stock market has gone up because money is too easy, credit is too easy, and investors are expecting the Fed to cut rates. And investors believe in a fantasy of a soft landing and 2% inflation. None of that is going to happen. Uh, and so when reality rears its head, the stock market is going to collapse unless the Fed just lets the inflation run, which is what I think is going to happen. And maybe the stock market doesn't crash in dollars, but it crashes in terms of gold. And when the stock market goes down, so is everybody's wages. Uh, because the price of everything is going to keep going up and the bottom is going to drop out of the dollar because our global creditors are going to realize that we can never pay the debt and inflation is never going to stop. And the central banks that are moving into gold now, they're going to accelerate their buying and then the price of gold will move up even faster and bonds will co collapse. And, you know, the entire banking system is insolvent. That's the big problem. When interest rates were kept at zero, and all these homeowners were refinancing their mortgages at 3%, the banks own all that paper. They're, they're insolvent now. They own all these treasuries. Thanks to the government, the Fed, the entire U.S. banking system is insolvent. And if the, the Fed actually raised interest rates to an appropriate level, all the banks would fail, including all the too big to fail banks. Bitcoin has beaten gold, so you should buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin has beaten stocks. It's beaten real estate. It's beaten everything. So by that argument, just put all your money in Bitcoin. Bitcoin and gold have nothing in common. Gold is an actual uh, asset, asset, a metal a valuable precious metal that has all sorts of uses. Bitcoin is nothing. It's just a digital string of numbers. But sure, as long as people want to buy it, the price can go up. But eventually, people are going to want to sell it and the price is going to collapse. Gold is a real commodity. Gold is used in all sorts of things. You can't make Bitcoin without gold. The Bitcoin miners use gold to create Bitcoin. But Bitcoin doesn't have any actual value. Somebody Bitcoin. I'm not sending them money. I'm sending them Bitcoin. Right. Now, they could sell the Bitcoin to somebody else and get money if somebody wants to buy it. But I'm not sending them actual money. But if you tokenize gold, I can send you ownership of my gold through a blockchain. And now you own that gold. So that's real. 
Send, so when you send Bitcoin, you send nothing. People don't understand the difference between the two. Like they say Bitcoin is a store of value, but it doesn't have any value. You can't store what you don't have. The reason gold is a store of value is I can take the gold that I have and in 100 years, I can make a watch with it. I can conduct electricity with it. Right? Yeah. I, I can use it in medicine, in dentistry. Gold has a real purpose in the world. It is a commodity that is used throughout industry. Obviously, the biggest use is jewelry, but it's not the only use. But Fair I enough. don't see people you know, not wanting jewelry in yeah. the future. I mean, jewelry is people have been wearing jewelry for thousands of years. I don't think that's going to stop. The people who are going to get killed are these hodlers, the people who never sell who are just diehard fanatics. I'm taking my Bitcoin to the grave. During the interview, Peter Schiff elaborates on a bullish future for gold, seeing its recent uptrend as the start of a larger repricing. He observed that while central banks are buying, retail investors and institutions have yet to fully adopt gold, believing its rise is due to inflation. The current surge in gold prices can be attributed to a confluence of factors. Chief among them is the issue of persistent inflation. The latest Consumer Price Index, CPI data, shows that inflation climbed from 3.2% in February to 3.5% in March, a concerning trend that has continued to erode consumers' purchasing power. With the looming threat of sustained high inflation, investors have progressively sought refuge in gold, perceiving it as a safe haven. This surge in demand has propelled prices upward. In his critique, Schiff condemned the market's inflation misunderstanding, finding recent Fed rate hikes lacking. He pushed for bolder actions like higher interest rates and spending cuts to combat inflation, cautioning against a return to 1970s like spiraling inflation. Let's get back to the interview. Gold is going much, much higher. Uh, th this is just the beginning of a massive repricing of gold. And, you know, people aren't even buying it yet. You have central banks buying, but investors are, aren't even buying gold. Retail investors, the institutions... Uh, they're not in the market at all. They don't even understand why gold is rising. They're attributing it to geopolitical risks, but it's all about inflation. The key is that the markets have the inflation story wrong. The Fed rate hikes up to five and a quarter, five and a half, have not been nearly enough to put the inflation genie back in the bottle. Yes, we had a small decline in the uh, CPI. We went from a high of just over 9% to about 3%. We're now more around three and a half ish. But that's it. We've seen the lows. We're going back up. Uh, we're going to be above 9% maybe by next year. But we're not you going anywhere near. You think we get back to near. that? Oh, yeah, we're going to go higher than that. You know, we're, we're, we're not going anywhere near. You know, in 1969, when inflation spiked up to about 6.2%, then it pulled back to the mid threes in 1970-71, and everybody thought the problem was over. And then it exploded. And within two years, it was double digits. And then we had the rest of the 1970s. So yes, we've had an initial decline from a huge spike. But remember, inflation is the expansion of the money supply and the expansion of credit. And we had a major expansion of the money supply during the QE era, particularly during COVID. And even though the Fed has stopped QE, it continues to hold interest rates artificially low. The rates are still stimulative. They're not restrictive the way a PAL claims because debt continues to hit new records. Uh, consumer debt is at record highs. Household debt, credit card debt keeps making new record highs. Consumers keep borrowing money and spending it, and so does the government. Mm -hmm. Budget deficits are at record highs. There's been no cuts to government spending. And so inflation is continuing uh, despite these rate hikes. In fact, the rate hikes are also costs that have to be, uh, you know, added into uh, goods prices because interest rates are like raw materials or labor or rent. And so all this is being passed on. And so nothing has been done. In order to really fight inflation, the Fed needs to raise interest rates much higher then it's already raised them. And the government needs to cut spending. And then so do consumers. Everybody has to reduce their spending, but they're not. Now, people are buying less, but they're paying more. So they're still spending and they're taking second and third jobs. You know, moonlighting has exploded. More Americans than ever 
are working multiple jobs to pay the bills, but all those paychecks being spent, we're pushing up prices. So we're early in an inflationary spiral. This is going to make the 1970s you know, look tame by comparison, much mm. higher inflation. Over the past two and a half years, gold has shown a steady value growth, reinforcing its reputation as a substantial and safe investment. With gold prices rising during uncertain times, it's no wonder investors see it as a rock-solid asset. While some swear by Bitcoin, gold's timeless appeal in different industries proves its reliability as a safe bet. Considering the recent surge in gold and Bitcoin prices, do you believe these assets will continue to move in tandem? Or do you foresee gold outperforming the other soon? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.